here we are given a signal that's described as band unlimited. And that means that it extends throughout the frequency axis. It doesn't have a finite frequency band. So it's called a band unlimited signal. But we nevertheless want to digitize it. So we're using an ADC. An ADC, all that means is a sampler followed by a quantizer. And for the purposes of this question, we're interested in the sampling bit. And what we're told is the clock rate is 100 megahertz. So the clock, that's the sampling frequency. So the 100 megahertz clock is our sample frequency. So how is that going to help us? So we're told that this band unlimited signal is passed through a low pass filter. Why, does it, why do we do that? It's to avoid aliasing, because obviously if we're going to use all of the frequency axis, then there's going to be some overlap. So the low pass filter is chosen in such a way that after filtering and after sampling, what we're going to have is critical sampling. That means the sample rate should be equal to 2 times the bandwidth. But the signal isn't band limited. So the bandwidth is what we are going to set in a second. So if we apply our low pass filter, for example, here, then we are imposing a bandwidth of B. And everything beyond that will be removed by the low pass filter. So we're told that there's a low pass filter. That's our anti-aliasing filter. That will remove all frequencies higher than this value B. And that's what's band limiting our signal. Okay, so this process is called band limiting. So we started with a band unlimited, and now we are band limiting our signal. So what does that actually do? Let me um, show you. So the spectrum, well, we can disconnect that, and then we can just erase all of that. So our spectrum now looks like that. It's a band limited spectrum. So af after we sample, after we sample, what will now happen is we're going to have spectral replicas. We're going to have this replicating, but we're going to make sure that it's critical sampling. So this happens both negative and frequent, uh, positive, and it keeps happening as an infinite number of these. But the sampling is such that, let me just um, tidy these up. The sampling is such that this is your sample rate. This is minus fs, and this is equal to 2b, because obviously if this is b, then this distance here will be twice b. Okay, so what we've made sure in uh, choosing our bandwidth is that after sampling, what we have is critical sampling. So it says, what is the highest suitable bandwidth for the filter? This bandwidth is going to be 
um, one half the 100 megahertz. So it'll be 50 megahertz. That would be a suitable value for the filter. So if you know the bandwidth of your signal, then your clock frequency or your sampling frequency should be at least twice that. But if it's the other way around, if you know your sampling frequency, then you should make sure that you filter your signal so that the highest frequency is at most half of that sampling frequency. So this is like the Nyquist theorem backwards. So in questions like this, rather than taking the bandwidth and doubling it, you take the sample rate and you half it. So that would be your final answer.